Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today for this another edition of Redline vlog style reviews, I've got a new car that was just dropped off today at my house, the 2020 Mercedes-Benz A220. Basically the A-Class, their most affordable car they offer here in America. And I apologize if the car looks a little bit dirty. It was spotlessly clean about two hours ago, but then of course it's the middle of spring here in the DC area. The rain came through, the tree pollen turned the car yellow, and this is basically a subtle reminder of why I hate black cars. They look good when they're clean, they're just tough to actually keep clean. Now this car is super important for Mercedes-Benz because it is their most affordable model. This car starts at around $32,800, add about $2,000 for formatic all-wheel drive, which this car has, because remember, this is a front drive car if you don't get all-wheel drive. This one here is pretty modestly equipped at around $41,000. That's right, $41,000 for a brand new Mercedes-Benz. So in this video, I'm gonna find out, is this baby Benz actually worth it if you're on a budget, or is it going to constantly remind you that it's a cheap Mercedes? That's what we're here to find out. Now I know a lot of you are probably thinking, why on earth would I wanna buy a cheap Mercedes? A Mercedes that starts at around $33,000. It just doesn't make sense. A luxury car should not be attainable. Remember the affordable or the current new car transaction price is around $35,000. So this car is priced right there in the average new car transaction for a base model. Now granted, this one here is a much more modest $41,000. This is essentially the least special one that you can buy. I was surprised that Mercedes dropped off one that was so lightly optioned because you can lease this car for as cheap as around $330 a month. That's for a base model. This one here would probably be closer to around $370 a month. This is a three year lease with around $4,000 down. This is the terms that you can find on the Mercedes-Benz uh, consumer website across the country. But as you can see, without the AMG Sport package, it has a much more pedestrian look to it. It's a much more cleaner, maybe not cleaner, but safer look. It just looks far more conservative. The grill especially has much smaller openings. The lower bumper extensions aren't quite as aggressive or as wide open as the one with the sport package. Surprisingly, you still get features like full LED headlights, LED low and high beams, LED turn signals, even on the base model. Remember there was a time that Mercedes used to give you those cheap looking halogens if you guys went for a model that was the pure base model, but now at least you get full LEDs. Uh, you can upgrade those of course to the swiveling LEDs and the projector style high beam as opposed to the low beam that you see that's a reflector on this one. This car does have their attention assist, so it has automatic emergency braking, but as you can see from the large three-pointed star, it is missing the driver assistance package that would roll in the automatic adaptive cruise control. Regardless, you don't wanna be driving a car that constantly reminds you that you bought the cheap version of a luxury car, especially for those of you who bought a first-generation CLA. That constantly reminds you that it was the cheap Mercedes. Now, the A-Class in general has the look and feel of a CLS. I mean, that car, it was the first, you know, four-door coupe body style that Benz ever did back in 2004. The rear of this car, some of you again have said it looks like a Kia. Uh, I would definitely agree that the look is a little bit more vanilla. Unfortunately, that same rear end has been grafted onto the 2021 uh, E-Class. So it's a look that's here to basically stay. And the rear of the vehicle, as you can see, some of you have told me it looks like a Kia, but at least it gives you full LED taillights. So you have LED turn signals and full LED brake lights. So they don't jip you there. Those exhaust tips that you see are actually just exhaust trim pieces. They are not real. They're not connected to the actual pipes. And the trunk capacity, as you can see, is pretty small at around 10.5 cubic feet. And the surprising thing about the A-Class or the CLA, it's a car that Ben said that a lot of GTI owners traded up for, people who had hot hatches traded into uh, their entry-level model, which again, brought in a new class of buyer, a new younger generation into the Ben's showrooms. And you're noticing, I keep saying Ben's because if I say Mercedes. How may I help you? Why do you always interrupt me when I'm trying to do a review? What can I do for you? You can shut up. 
Okay, shutting up now. <laughs> sometimes she pops up, sometimes she doesn't. She doesn't. So as you can see there, she didn't say anything. Um, now, last year, they actually sold around 17,000 of these A classes here in the US. It actually outsold the Audi A3 and the BMW 2 Series by about 17 to 10,000 units. So this is the best selling model. And actually it outsold the Volkswagen GTI by about uh, 5,000 units. So obviously there are people that are looking for a car like this because you want to get into the Mercedes you know, family. This is the car that's going to bring you into their portfolio because it's available at an affordable price, yada, yada. So the first test to see if this is actually a real Mercedes, let me first show you guys the interior. And as you can see at a glance, two massive displays, actually a 10 and a quarter inch display in the instrument panel and on the uh, infotainment screen. It basically has the look of the bigger Mercedes-Benz models, because remember this has MBUX, which is their newest uh, infotainment user experience, Mercedes user experience. You've got some aluminum trim splashed on the door panels. This one here has the leatherette seats with heated seats. So we'll come back to this interior in just a second, but I have to say my initial impressions are, it looks pretty nice at a glance. Door even sounds really good when it shuts. So a small car like this, you're probably wondering, the back seat space, throw away, would you say? Well, looking at the actual space, Mercedes says you get around 32 inches of legroom back here. And unlike the CLA, which has that sloping roof line, this is a little bit better. Let me get back here and show you guys. Now, as you can see here, at five foot seven, I have plenty of headroom back here. Uh, leg space is decent. There's a pretty good amount of floor space or foot space underneath the front seats. There is a fairly large hump right here, which does take up uh, space there for the middle passenger rear seat air vents. You have two USB-C charging ports there, a little bit of storage. Uh, and then that panoramic sunroof is actually standard equipment, but it doesn't actually come all the way to the back seats, which would have been nice. So usable back seats, but uh, they are definitely reserved for shorter adults. Inside the A-Class definitely has a look that will impress you initially. I mean, check out this interior and how it's completely laid out here. It's got a nice uh, full LCD display here that goes from the instrument panel over to the middle part for the infotainment system. It's not one continuous screen, although it looks like that. There's a little bit of a break here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if Mercedes eventually fixed that and made this one continuous piece. It does, of course, include things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but on the smaller screens here, it doesn't actually take up the entire 10 and a quarter inch display like it would on some of the more expensive and bigger Mercedes models. This screen also is not quite as tall like you would get in some of those more expensive models as well. Material quality choices in here are also, you know, they look great, but, you know, for the $40,000 base model, um, you're not going to find all of that stitched leather. The aluminum trim here that you see, however, however, is actually real. This is kind of a soft touch molded plastic, although it feels a little bit rubberized as well. Over here, it's also soft touch, which is nice. This is pretty much what you expect in something like an economy car, like a Honda Civic. The door panel here is also soft touch, but it doesn't have the leather stitching. This is the MB Tex faux leather that you find on the seats. It's over here on the door panels. There's an aluminum accented door handles. And then the window switches feel not quite as nice as the metal ones you get, of course, in the bigger Mercedes models. This premium package that my tester has adds the power folding mirrors, which is nice. And then the steering wall, as you can see here, it's nothing super special. It doesn't have the AMG uh, sport package for the wheel, so it doesn't have that flat bottom. You do have some of those touch sensitive buttons here, which you can control this controller over here or the screen over there, which is nice. And then of course here, you've got those signature circular vents that Mercedes does. It looks fairly, you know, modern. It looks very uh, high tech in here. No wireless charging pad. This one here is missing that for an extra 200 bucks. Instead, your USB port is over there. And then you can control this little pad here uh, from the little touchpad here, or this is also a touchscreen, or you can also do things like, hey, Mercedes, and she will come up and ask you if you have any questions. Seat Kinetics is 
a really interesting feature where it's not massaging seats, but if you turn it on, um, the seat bolsters will start to kind of adjust. They'll move side to side or forward and back a little bit to apparently keep you awake during you know longer drives, which is interesting. The seats themselves, they feel a little bit flat for me. These are just the MB Tech seats. So it doesn't actually have the real leather. Um, they do offer a heated seat for about 500 bucks that my tester has. For another $500 extra, you can also spec in ventilated seats or you can also get in full leather. Mercedes offers multiple colors. Down here, there is some cheaper hard touch plastic. So kind of keep that in mind. This interior, while it is worlds better than what you know Mercedes used to offer on the first generation CLA, those of you who are used to like, let's say an E-Class or an S-Class, this is going to have the look of it, but it won't necessarily have the plush materials and the full luxury feel. Driving this thing out on the road, does it feel like the cheap Mercedes? Now, Mercedes always have a feel to them. They have a solid, hefty What's feel it? when you drive the cars. And as you can see there, she just decides to show up whenever I don't want her to actually start talking. Um, this car definitely doesn't have that heavy, you know, bank faults or like feel that you get from the bigger models. The car feels very light and nimble on its feet. The steering is light and numb. Uh, this is, it's been a while since I've driven a Benz product without their, you know, AMG Sport package. So I'm noticing the wheel has a still relatively nice feel to it, um, but I prefer the flat bottom wheel that you get on the AMG models. Um, so this is definitely kind of taking me aback. This is what most people buy when you go for a more affordable Mercedes model. When you put your foot down, it makes a noise that you typically don't associate with this brand. So let's pop that hood and see what's powering this thing. Now underneath the hood, which is actually supported by a strut instead of just a prop rod, which really surprised me, you're gonna find just a two liter turbocharged four cylinder. This is what the A220 is powered by, and it makes 188 horsepower and 221 pound-feet of torque. Those numbers are nothing short of groundbreaking. I mean, you've got cars like a Honda Civic that offers 180 horsepower from a 1.5 liter turbo engine, or you can get up to 205 horsepower from that same Civic motor in the SI. So these numbers, are definitely nothing that is going to stand out. It's actually on the low end for the segment, but Mercedes says you'll get to 60 in around 7.1 seconds, so decent performance. It all goes out through a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission, uh, and front-wheel drive will be standard. You can tell that because the engine itself is mounted transversely, or you can add 2,000 bucks, which will add in 4MATIC all-wheel drive, which my tester has here. Fuel economy is rated at 24 in the city, 34 on the highway, so pretty decent uh, gas mileage. You can actually put regular in this engine if you'd like. Premium is just recommended for maximum performance. This car weighs a little over 3,300 pounds. So 188 horsepower ain't a lot, and when you get it out on the road, it definitely is not the quickest car. I mean, this is a car that probably would keep up with those turbocharged Civics, which we live in a day and age where you can buy a $40,000 Benz, and it's not any faster than your neighbor's turbocharged you know, Civic with a 1.5 and CVT. Now, I will say that this has a much more desirable transmission. It's a seven-speed dual clutch, and the company has really been doing their due diligence to improve their more affordable lineup of dual clutch transmissions. It still ain't perfect. This is not as good as the latest, you know, stuff you're gonna find from the Volkswagen and an Audi family, but. It is no longer as clunky and as dim-witted as the first generation CLA, so props to Benz for really improving that. This is probably adequate, adequate power for most, most people. I just, I'm not a fan of the sound. It's smooth, but it's just rather uncharacteristic. You know, if you cover up the three-pointed star logo here in the steering wheel, and I drove blindfolded if that was possible, I would probably think I was in any other, you know, economy car because even the seats don't really hold you in place all that well. So I would probably recommend upgrading the seats, especially if you guys, you know, plan to actually attack some back roads all the time in this car. It's a small car. It's supposed to feel nimble. It's supposed to be 
great for handling and such. The all-wheel drive option is probably something I would recommend for $2,000. You just don't buy a front-wheel drive luxury car. Just front-wheel drive and luxury, for me, they don't really go hand-in-hand -hand very well, especially when you start adding so much power to them. You've got that torque steer, that wheel hop. This car, put your foot down. There's no wheel spin, there's no drama. Actually, there's very little drama. It does have paddles, paddles here on the wheel, which they actually do a pretty decent job. But it will shift for you automatically if you are trying to bounce off the limiter for this thing, which does kind of annoy me. I don't like these automatics that will shift for me automatically. Now from the side profile, you can see this is a cute little car. It's actually the smallest sedan that Mercedes makes at around 179 inches long. This is about six to seven inches shorter than most of the compact competitors. This is actually smaller than something like a Honda Civic in the overall length. And what do you guys think of the look? I actually think it's a relatively well-proportioned sedan. My tester here has these optional $500 18-inch wheels riding on 225 with tires. You can spec up to a 19 if you guys choose the AMG package. This black exterior color is a free color choice along with the interior color choice. Now, of course, if this is not enough power for you, Mercedes does offer an AMG-ified version called the A35 or CLA35, which easily adds like another 120 plus horsepower to this. it really falls on its face when you're trying to get up to highway speeds. You just want more from this engine, which is why you might want to consider the AMG version, which has around 302 horsepower. You'll get to 60 in around 4.7 seconds for that model versus the 7.1 that you go for this model. It is an enticing proposition, but it's going to cost you around $12,000 extra for the AMG a fied ball. And some may argue that it's not a full fledged AMG because it's not the A45 model that has like 380 horsepower that you can get in Europe. Turned around that corner there and put my foot down and there was actually no wheel spin or torque steer, which is good. It's a very good all-wheel drive system. Mercedes does an amazing 4Matic all-wheel drive system. Now, of course, it's not a rear drive, rear drive biased all-wheel drive system like 4Matic Plus that you're gonna find in some of the AMG-ified models, but for all weather traction conditions, it's going to be good. Now, in terms of quietness and luxury, Let's switch the drive mode here to comfort. And unfortunately, the A-Class is going to remind you of its more pedestrian routes because there is a fair amount of road noise that creeps in. There's a fair amount of wind noise. The engine at least stays quiet until you really start pushing it. But the car just feels rather unremarkable. There's more road noise than I expect in a Mercedes. But again, you can't really expect too much when you've got a car that's this affordable in the lineup. Now, I am excusing the car a little bit more right now because of that $40,000 sticker price, but for the ones that approach, you know, 50, that go a little over $50,000, it's a little more, it's a lot more inexcusable, uh, especially when you start looking at the options. My tester here is missing the full driver assistance package for $2,250, which includes the Distronic Plus, the active lane keep assist, uh, the lane change uh, assist, that's like an extra $2,200, which comes standard on a lot of the other competitors. I'm talking the non-luxury competitors, but that's the way luxury brands are. Even mine here has the, you know, the big you know, 10 and a quarter inch info or display here with uh, augmented reality GPS, which is amazing for the price point that this car offers it in. However, if you're looking for satellite radio, it's an extra $460 that my tester doesn't have. It also doesn't have a wireless charging, Qi wireless charging for an extra 200 bucks. It doesn't have an automatic garage door opener for another you know, 500 bucks. The interior lighting where you can change the colors with 64 different colors. That's another, you know, $500, $600 as well. That should all be included in the premium package that my tester has for like $1,800. But instead, you have to add it a la carte. And that's, I think, where Mercedes has a missed opportunity here. They need to stop with all those a la carte options because it's just not fair. If I'm going to be adding a premium package for nearly two grand, it should include all those other things instead of the a la carte stuff. Because once you start adding all that stuff in, that's when the price of this vehicle will creep above $50,000, which is just grossly overpriced at that point. 
Thankfully, because this has a really small displacement turbocharged engine, it's very light, it's very nimble. It does get fairly decent gas mileage, and I actually average very close to 30 MPG in my week's worth of testing. So great MPG. You can put regular in this thing, but you know, with such a small fuel tank and how gas prices are so cheap right now, you may as well just put premium in this thing. You probably will notice a slight difference in performance, and when you have an engine that's already so low on horsepower like this, I mean, this engine can easily be tuned to produce way more than the 188 that it's been rated at, but again, Mercedes detuned it on purpose to kind of protect the CLA 250, which has more horsepower than this model. Luxury buyers also really care about the sound system, which I forgot to mention earlier in the interior. This has the standard Mercedes sound system, which doesn't sound super impressive. I would recommend poning up the extra $850 to go to the Burmester sound system. Now, of course, this is not like the five to $6,000 Burmester sound system you find in the bigger models with like the elaborate fancy pop-up speakers, but this one here, I noticed the bass tend to got a little bass heavy and it would really start to distort if you turned it all the way up. Uh, that's a really important deciding factor for a lot of luxury buyers, so my recommendation, pony up for the Burmester sound system. So there you have it, guys, my comprehensive overview on the 2020 Mercedes-Benz A220 4Matic, a really beautiful looking car. Uh, lots of features for the money, really looks expensive for certain parts of the interior, but I think that Mercedes has also priced it about five thousand dollars too expensive because like I said forty one thousand dollars is relatively affordable for this car but it's missing about five thousand dollars in options that I think it should have at this price point the pricey driver assistance package as I mentioned the Burmester sound system the um, satellite radio the garage door opener the wireless charger that should all be included in the premium package that my tester has for two thousand bucks but again Mercedes makes you pay extra for it because they are a la carte options now again if you guys are disappointed with the acceleration of this car because I know only 180 eight horsepower isn't enough. You can also buy the CLA. The CLA 250 basically gives you another 50 horsepower versus this car. However, it'll cost you about $3,000 more or around $30 more a month. So fairly reasonable pricing. The back seat in the trunk is a little bit of the same of this car, but it has a much uh, sleeker coupe-like look versus the rear end look of this car. Uh, that car again, relatively affordable. This is also relatively affordable, but I am curious to know if there are some of you out there who have like a hot hatch, like a GTI or a Golf or, or like a Subaru WRX, would you trade in your hot, your sport compact car for something like this? Because Mercedes says that the top trade-ins for those, uh, for this car or for the CLA when it first came out, were those sport compact cars. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my overview on this 2020 A220. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.